I don't think we need to be afraid of it. There's not anything here that, that should really concern us. Uh, basically, Facebook set up two systems that were intended to negotiate with each other, and they kind of invented their own language to do that. That's not really surprising. There isn't any particular reason that two machines should speak in English unless we tell them to do that. Uh, but it's really important to recognize that these were very specialized systems that were set up to negotiate prices, and that's all they were going to do. They're not going to wake up and take over. Uh, I saw a lot of stories in the media that really focused on the fact that Facebook, quote, shut these down as though they shut it down because they were worried about what was going to happen. I don't think that's the case. I think they shut it down because it basically wasn't doing what they wanted it to do. They wanted it to right. converse in English so that they could understand what was happening. Um, but so RJ, this is, this is progress, is the... but it's nothing to be worried about. But is it symptomatic, RJ, of, I mean, okay, this one, bots talk to each other and, and it wasn't useful, so Facebook shut it down, to use that term. But is it symptomatic of the, the fears that Stephen Hawking and Bill Gates and Mark Cuban and others have about how it, the technology could get away from us? Yeah, well, I, you know, I think the, the real thing with AI is that it, it develops very quickly. And you know, even industry experts at times don't exactly know what's what's going on with it. And and really, what we need to be thinking about are the frameworks for sort of legal and, and ethical decisions which have to be made when when these things are are so advanced and we don't necessarily know what's going on. That that, the that has happened so often. The technology gets ahead of the regulators and the lawmakers and so forth. And this this could be happening again, right? It, exactly. And you know, obviously, uh, to, to Martin's point, the the example of of sort of two chatbots talking to each other. Uh, you know, not not that big of a deal. But if we think of the implications of something like a chatbot on a suicide hotline, or or you know, as we go into autonomous vehicles, there are any number of, of ethical dilemmas in terms of impact and and cars deciding who to save, if you will. Yeah. How would you, uh, Martin, characterize the speed at which AI is evolving and what that means for some of these practical use cases? It's true, it is evolving very rapidly, and I think some of those concerns are legitimate. On the other hand, you know, looking to the government, for example, to regulate all of this is probably, I think, misguided. I mean, I think we've seen that, that you know, the government is not going to be able to keep up with all of this either. So we're going to have to rely, to some extent, on the companies that are developing this to be responsible. And I think this may be one demonstration of that. I mean, one reason that Facebook decided not to go in this direction is they wanted to build a system that was transparent where they could understand what was happening. And that's actually one of the most important initiatives that's happening in AI right now is that there is increased you know, emphasis on building systems that are not black boxes, that don't just do something and we don't know what's going on. Rather, we want to understand what they're doing and that's becoming quite an important focus of research. So I, I take that as a positive and that's one of the ways that we're going to address these concerns. Do you have fears? Well, you know, I, I think the same fears that, that all of the, the rest of us, I What would I be your hope. biggest fear when it comes to the, the evolution of AI? Sure. So, so I think these well-scoped projects, such as a chat app where we know we want this to talk to another human, right, where, where it has to understand English, be able to negotiate, those are very well-scoped problems where we can sort of understand that space. A lot of these much more open-ended questions where people are just you know, training these sort of real sentient artificial intelligent beings, we don't really know where they're going to go. And uh, I think those are a lot of the, the sort of bigger questions to, to your sort of right. her or how. Either, either one, we don't really know where that's going to well, go. Well, it occurs to me, maybe we, we, we just let the bots solve those problems, <laughs> right? Exactly. They can figure it out. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.